and made the atoms fuse together. Nuclear fusion seemed to be happening almost effortlessly in a test tube, and it caused a sensation. Two scientists are claiming a breakthrough in the production of energy by nuclear fusion, the same process that powers the sun. It's been a dream of scientists for decades. Dr. Pons is an instant celebrity. Yeah. Pons and Fleischmann became household names as the idea of a cheap solution to all of mankind's energy problems caught the world's imagination. The rest of the scientific community quickly scrambled to catch up with Pons and Fleischmann and repeat what they had done. Any scientific process ought to be able to be reproduced exactly. Okay, we stop it there. Okay. Like about, you know, 100 or maybe 200 other labs around the world, within a day, Princeton had set up some cold fusion experiments and everybody was trying to replicate the results. Several hundred research teams around the world have been trying to prove the cold fusion theory. All over the country First has been rushing to replicate and to test the results of an apparently successful nuclear fusion experiment. Could be a hundred million dollars worth of research was done in a couple of weeks. Right? In terms of all the people's salaries that were paid for that time, all the people who are thinking about it, all the people who are trying to reproduce it, all the people who are spending their time carefully reading the paper and trying to understand it. The world waited expectantly to see if the results could be reproduced. And to begin with, it seemed to go well. Scientists at the University of Texas say they've repeated the experiment which claims to create nuclear fusion at room temperature. 109, OK. This morning's pictures from the Texas University showed energy and maybe history in the making. 3.1, 4.4. The key was tiny particles called neutrons. Whenever fusion happens, neutrons are given off. So in theory, the presence of neutrons would prove that fusion had taken place. But there was a complication. On a small scale, neutron detection is notoriously difficult because just tiny amounts of neutrons are produced, and these can easily be confused with something else. Naturally occurring background neutrons produced by the sun and found all around us here on Earth. And as neutron readings were double-checked, the picture began to change. Britain's leading atomic scientists have poured cold water on the idea of cold fusion. British scientists who've carried out extensive tests say there's no evidence that it works. This would have been a very significant discovery and we're very sad that uh, we've put all this effort in and failed to find anything. Most groups across the globe eventually agreed that all they could find were background neutrons. But it had taken several months and cost millions of pounds to reach that conclusion. With no fusion neutrons, whatever was happening simply couldn't be fusion. And so what had started as the biggest scientific breakthrough in the world turned into a scientific embarrassment of epic proportions. The two researchers who claim to have made the breakthrough have made no comment themselves. There was a conflict situation within the newspapers, which escalated in the university. Is very bad. Mm. Now, even Professor Fleischmann acknowledges he made a mistake. It isn't fusion. It's not fusion in the in the narrow sense. It is not fusion. Charlatans, frauds, yes. Well, they'll say whatever they want to say. 
Professor Fleischmann continued his work for a few years. But ever since March the 23rd, 1989, he has found it hard to get papers published in scientific journals. So you just squeezed out. Extruded. Scientifically extruded. Well, never mind. It seemed that the dream of a shortcut to nuclear fusion was dead. But then something happened to resurrect the dream. It began when physicist Seth Putterman heard about something that seemed more like magic than science. It was a way of turning sound into light. Seth Putterman was so intrigued by this idea that he set about trying to do it himself. It's a process called sonoluminescence. The first time I saw sonoluminescence was in a darkened room. I was transfixed to look at this uh, spherical flask of fluid. And you'd look into the center and in the center, see a, uh, a glowing blue-purple light, uh, which could be seen with the unaided eye. It looked like a star in the heavens. Seth Putterman called it the star in a jar, a tiny spot of bright light contained in a flask of liquid. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light, several thousand times a second, giving the appearance of a star. What made the phenomenon so exciting was the temperature of this star in a jar. On its surface alone, the light burns at tens of thousands of degrees. And Seth Putterman now contemplated a tantalizing possibility. Could the core of the collapsing bubble be even hotter? Hot enough for fusion. One of the mysteries of sonal luminescence is to determine exactly how hot the interior of the bubble gets. In the sun, the interior can be millions of degrees, hot enough to uh, cause fusion. And the thought crossed my mind that perhaps inside the collapsing bubble, the interior of the bubble might also get hot enough to cause fusion. If so, this would be something truly amazing. By simply bombarding tiny bubbles with sound waves, temperatures of over 10 million degrees would be created. And nuclear fusion, the same reaction that powers the sun, would be happening almost effortlessly here on Earth. One organization realized just what was at stake the US government. They immediately started pouring money into research to investigate whether sonoluminescence could finally be the shortcut to nuclear fusion that scientists had been dreaming of. And across the USA, several groups set to work trying to achieve this remarkable goal. <laughs> 